Hello and welcome to MCC Today. On today's show, we have Dr. Hubner, President of Meridian Community College, Phyllis Holliday, Phi Theta Kappa Advisor, and Pam Baranello, who is the uh, military advisor for uh, uh, any incoming military students. This is going to be a great show. Here at MCC, I've done things I've never thought was possible, never imagined. I've had one-on-one -on -one experiences with my professors. They've all helped. There's so much to do. We have a good sports program. Just a lot of things going on, and they, they care about students here. I honestly wouldn't trade my experience here for the world. I'm not close to being done yet, but I'm definitely on my way. I give all my thanks to Meridian Community College. Meridian Community College. Find your wings. And today on MCC Today, we have Dr. Hubner back for his second visit. I think at least my second. It is. Yep. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you today about uh, just what's going on on MCC's campus. What, what do we have going on lately? Well, we've got a lot of things. Or hopefully it's, in the, you know, Well, right, in the near future. It's, it's obviously it's the beginning of the school year, so we, we always have lots of beginning of the school year things that happen. But I, I, think, uh, I think it's been a good semester. Um, we, we've got... I know in, in the recruiting front, we have we've got a number of schools coming in. We yes. have an Eagle Experience this week, and so starting um, Friday. That's yeah, right. Tomorrow, yeah, people are going to get a chance to come learn about the college. Um, I'm particularly proud that we've got schools bringing whole groups of people to campus and tour to visit. So I'm really excited about that, um, um, and because that's that's the decision on the part of administrators at at schools. In some cases, outside our service area. In yes. fact, in a lot of cases, outside our service area. Uh, deciding that there's something good happening here and they want to come expose their students to it so I'm excited about that but but in addition to that we've got um, we've got um, we had pizza with the president on on Monday which was How a lot of go? fun well it's good because I, I get to eat pizza sure sure right and I get to eat with students. nothing can be bad with <laughs> nothing pizza. can be bad with pizza and I get to I get to meet with students and and it's it's a real good chance for me to get to know people as they come into campus mainly and then see students who have been around a while I think yesterday you went to the POWMI I did. program. How yeah. was that? Oh, it was really incredible. Um, Captain Robinson was the uh, kind of the keynote speaker, and mm -hmm. so, um, and I think I, I mentioned on a Facebook post that uh, I was kind of struck by the fact that the day he became a prisoner of war was the exact day in 1965 I was born. Mm -hmm. So uh, prior to the event, I actually had a chance to send him a note just to let him know that. That something about that was just very moving for me, you mm -hmm. know, uh, that he was willing to um, uh, sacrifice himself for, you know, for all of us. But certainly on a day that I was born, just just something struck me about that. And so his his story and his is very powerful as he talked about uh, some of his experiences there for seven and a half years as a prisoner of war. And I think he so, was 22 years old when he was first absolutely captured, right? 22 so he, years he was old. that young, right? And then seven and a half years as a prisoner, right? And uh, the person I was talking to said that you could hear a pin drop. Oh, it was it was really it was incredible. It really was. And of course, then they have um, they have a ceremony that you will often see in military um, situations where there is an empty chair, mm -hmm. and uh, that symbolizes the the missing in action or the I I, um, I assume the missing in action. But uh, and they they kind of perform the setting up of that that empty chair yesterday, and it was just very very moving as as members of the military came and, and added components to the table and it was explained as they were doing it why the table was round, for example, and the tablecloth. And, and so it was it was, it was was very, very, uh, very moving ceremony yesterday. And I think Meridian Community College, we've always been, we've always had a very good re relationship with the military. Right, yeah, so I'm, we I'm, have. And, and so, so, you know, we have uh, one I, what I call one of our superstar employees, Pam Baranello, uh, Who works. will be on next? Actually. Oh, oh, okay, very good. So <laughs> Pam, Pam does a great job working with military personnel in the area, uh, and certainly on campus, and keeps us aware of, of 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 important things we can be a part of in our community related to military. But uh, in fact, we're we're having a ceremony tomorrow as well. Mm -hmm. um, which is um, interestingly my birthday, but it's. Yes, uh, I was going to mention that. So you're, you're going to be 27? 27. Yes. Seven, yes. Right, and exactly. how will you celebrate? 
Um, I think I'll be working during okay, the day. Okay, okay. And, Which uh, is a pleasure, just, you know, everyone. Yeah. Right, that's right, <laughs> exactly. So, but in addition, I think uh, we might be going to a high school football game tomorrow okay. night. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Whatever we would do on a Friday night. So, <laughs> no, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to have people around me who um, are encouraging and supportive, so it's, it's good. But, yeah, so that... We're going to have a ceremony in the morning, and so it's going to be at the flagpole out in front of campus. And this I is for the POWMI, not for, your birthday. Not for my birthday. Okay, okay. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but I look forward, last year it was, it was um, brief but moving, and I look forward to the same thing this year. Okay. Now, do we have anything coming up at MCC uh, that you can tell us about as far as, you know, programs or anything? Programs, yeah. Anything that's going to well, be happening as far as maybe new programs that we're getting right. or anything like that? Sure. Yeah. So, we're, we write in, in, in recent months have been working hard. We received last year a $1.1 million grant in advanced manufacturing. And so, right. we've been in the process of creating the space where that will be uh, at our Workforce Development Center. and, and uh, and that is going to be finished probably in the next few months. Uh, we're hoping by December, but then we'll uh, get our equipment ordered and we'll get that moved into that, into that um, space. And that lab is going to be um, a state-of-the-art advanced manufacturing lab. But in addition, we're creating a CAD 3D engineering technology classroom inside that building, okay. as well as an automation technology classroom. And our students who are part of our construction trades program uh, programs uh, are... Um, are building the inside of those those and so it gives them some great hands-on experience and and then of course is obviously a benefit to the college as well so we've got that going on and then in addition to that if ever you know people drive on campus they look on top of Ivy Hall and knows there are people walking around mm -hmm. we're putting a roof on that building we're getting ready to do some significant upgrades to some restrooms and I know that sounds crazy well, but bathrooms. you gotta you gotta and, keep up what you got right I mean. right and uh, and uh, uh, we've got the work, some great conversations this week about upgrading our science labs in Ivy Hall uh, very significantly and something that we've been needing to do for a long time. And um, in addition to that, um, something real exciting is, uh, but for the people in the building, really exciting is new HVAC system that we've got going in Excellent. very soon, hopefully in, uh, in Riley Health Sciences. I was thinking this morning, I was like, what, what, what kind of questions do I need to ask you? Do I want to ask you? <laughs> and, and this is because I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and this is all seriousness, no, you know, you know, all joking aside, what do you think the obligation, our obligation is to, our, to Lauderdale County and right. the city of Meridian? Yeah. Meridian Community College, what do you think, what kind of obligation do we have right. to them, to this area? So that's, a, that's really a good question, because I think it, it goes to what our fundamental mission is. Like, mm -hmm. what do we do? And so, um, and I know you've heard me talk about this, and because I talk about it every chance I get. Um, you know, we, we have, um, well, I know a couple of things. And one of them is that when a student invests their time, energy in a community college education, that it has lifelong dividends. And, mm -hmm. and I also know that when a community invests its resources in higher education, particularly in community college education, it has it has um, exponential dividends on that on that community. Not only in terms of just opportunities it creates, but tax revenue it creates, for example. So, um, um, so it's 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 important for uh, us to share that message. But but more importantly, though, I mean, just on that personal level, uh, when I think about like, what do we do? Why do we do it? And it's because we we expect transformations in individuals mm -hmm. because we, we all know this it may have been your story my story where you uh, where you see a, a student who's transformed in some way uh, that then gives opportunity for them to transform families and when families get transformed it transforms communities and so I feel like we are at the front line on mm -hmm. the cutting edge of helping to uh, helping to usher in or helping to uh, navigate those transformations so uh, what that means, though, as a, as, a, as a community college, and specifically at Meridian Community College, we have to be very focused on how can we uh, uh, help encourage people to come and find the place they fit in here. Mm -hmm. In some cases, it's an adult basic education. Maybe mm -hmm. they need a GED. In some cases, it's non-credit workforce training, or maybe they need a skill in a particular area where they can come. They don't need college credit. Right. They just need to know that or have a certificate mm -hmm. in some area so they can get an opportunity at work. 
But in a lot of cases, we know a student wants to uh, be something that requires a four-year degree or even more, a doctor, uh, perhaps a lawyer, a teacher. Uh, and so we're always thinking of how we can help that student uh, uh, find what his or her purpose is and then mm -hmm. help to, help to um, um, uh, engage that student in ways so that he or she can get there. Uh, and in some cases, as I talk about, you know, we've got students who want to come in, they want to spend a year, maybe two, uh, get some college credit, and they want to uh, go out and get a job. And right mm -hmm. now it's a good economy for that, so yes. good opportunities. Um, and then something interesting, um, we, the, the four-year institutions in Mississippi have recently created what's called the Bachelor of Applied Science degree program. And so we're actively engaged, for example, if for that student who wants to come in and get that career technical education where they can go get a job, but then at some point they want to come back and finish a four-year degree. Well, the IHL schools or the four-year universities in Mississippi have created uh, an avenue by which a student can do that. And so we're, we're, we're working very actively with our, our friends across the road at MSU Meridian to to think about the different kinds of programs we can we can implement or uh, just build on that mm -hmm. that can create those opportunities for people out there who who need them. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I do hope you come back and see us. Well, no, and I now, will. Now listen. Now uh, you're going to hit 27, so you'll be 30 soon. <laughs> I'll so be 30 just soon. make sure that right. you're, you're getting everything done that you want to get done. Exactly, because <laughs> it gets slow after that. I understand. I'm just so, saying things no. start falling apart. <laughs> but please come back Thank and you. see us again. I appreciate it. Enjoy we'll be right time. back. Today we are lucky to have uh, Miss Phyllis Holiday, and when I say lucky, I meant that I strong-armed her. <laughs> I went by the math lab and I said, you are going to be on this show, yes. uh, but you are math teacher extraordinaire and Phi Theta Kappa advisor, I am. but we have something coming up that Phi Theta is involved in that uh, I wanted to talk to you about. Yes. Okay, so yes. what's coming up? All right, so the Queen City Race for Life and Street Stroke for Breast Cancer is coming up, and it is next Saturday, September the 28th, um, and is at Dumont Plaza, downtown Meridian. Um, this is, in fact, the 10th year for the race, the 11th year for the, the Street Strut part, but the 10th year for the race, and so we're excited about that. Um, it is hosted by Meridian Community College, but specifically New Upsilon and our, our Phi Theta Kappa chapter. Um, and so we organize that, all the volunteers and everybody who's there that day. There'll be lots of green in the middle of all the, the sea of pink for <laughs> breast cancer. So, yes. <clears throat> now, uh, how many people do you think is going to be there? I do not know. We have had a really good crowd um, in the past, but in, in true 5K race, fashion. Most people wait until the last minute to register, um, but we've had as many as, you know, two to three hundred um, and then plus all of, of the um, volunteers and just people who are there to watch the event. So there are multiple events that happen that day. So there are a 5k um, run and walk. Um, there is also a one mile fun run. Um, okay. There is also a high heel dash, um, <laughs> and you can be okay. male or female to participate, but okay. most of the time it is, um, it is men, um, and they literally wear their high heels, and they run down 22nd Avenue, and it is a race. Um, How far do they have to run? Well, it's just a dash, so it's just like 500. Okay. Yeah, so, um, and so they, and some of them dress up, you don't have to dress up, but some do. Um, but it's just fun because a lot of them are, some of them are husbands that do that in honor of their wives who've had sure. breast cancer. Um, I don't know if I can say this or not, but I think we have a couple of men from here that are planning on participating in that next week. So, uh, <laughs> so that will be fun. Um, and then my favorite part of the event is the street strut aspect. And okay. that, what, that to me is what makes this event really different and special. Um, and that is where you can decorate an umbrella in honor or in memory of a breast cancer survivor. And they literally strut their stuff around the gazebo. Um, so grandchildren come out, like just, just women of all ages, 
um, you know, men, women, kids. I mean, it's just, it's just great fun. And we do give prizes for the best decorated umbrellas. But it just, to me, um, just reiterates the reason why we're there, the reason sure. why we're having the event and trying to raise um, those funds. And so it's just a fun, fun day. How do people register? Okay, so to register, um, you can go, the easiest thing to do is to go to time to net, time to net, time to run dot net. Um, so the number two, um, so time to run dot net and all of the things are there. Okay. Um, so you can also call um, MCC and get in touch with me, um, the direct number to MCC, or you can call my office, which is 601-553-3439, um, and I'll be glad to, to share information. Um, if you want to, still, it's still not too late to donate door prizes, or if you wanted to be a vendor, we have vendor booths there, um, a kid's corner where we have a jumpy and face painting, and so there's just a lot going on. It's just a fun morning for the entire family, um, and just such a great cause. It really is. It yeah. really is. Now, uh, can people register up till that day? They can. So, so you, they can just come there and register. Right. Yeah. For anything. So you can pre-register um, at the the website that I gave, um, and it's twenty dollars for all of the um, events except for the street strut. That's only five dollars for the street strut to pre-register. Um, and then if you register the day of, the cost is more, um, and so it's twenty-five dollars, and then seven for okay. the street strut. And um, you know, well, you do receive a T-shirt in your packet, um, but that's really only guaranteed if you pre-register. Okay. So, um, and then there's also packet pickup on that Friday before on the twenty-seventh at the Hilton Garden Inn, starting at ten a.m. So. Um, a lot of runners like to get their packets ahead of time so they can just show up that morning. So, um, and I don't think I mentioned the time, but it does start, the race starts at 8, um, but we'll do the national anthem and kick off at 740 that morning. So Dr. Huebner will be there, Victor the Eagle will be there, um, just all kinds of, you know, like I said, there will be a sea of green and a sea of pink, and it will be a good, good day. I brought my nephew, I think it was last year or the year before, I think it was last year though, and we just had a really good time. Yes, it's, it's a lot it's of fun. It's a really, really why, good time. Why did... Uh, or how did Phi Theta Kappa get involved with this? So the very first year, like I said, we did the street strut first before we did um, the race. And um, a group of our officers actually had seen the umbrella street strut in another city. And they were like, that is so awesome. We want to bring that back to Meridian. So we did that. It was a very small event the first year because it was just the street strut. Um, we joined with a group of breast cancer survivors, um, our support group for breast cancer survivors here in Meridian. Um, at the time, they were called the Carousel Ladies. They've kind of revamped since then. Um, and they really got behind that. The city got behind that, um, you know, and we did a, you know, proclamation um, of October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And, um, and so, so then the next year, Cindy Kane Schrock, um, whose sister um, at the time had breast cancer, she wanted to start a race, and so we joined in together on that, and we've been doing it, like I said, this is the 10th year. So since then, her sister um, has passed away, and so mm. we continue um, to do that in her memory. Um, and then uh, my mom, actually, and my grandmother were both diagnosed last year. They're doing great. Um, they both just had their checkups. My grandmother had, yes. yes. She's and a so survivor. that, it's always been a special event, but now it's super, super special. Sure. So. Um, and one other thing I just wanted to say that the proceeds are going this year to the Anderson Cancer Patient Benevolence Fund. So all of the proceeds this year are staying local to help Good. patients um, who may not can afford their treatments or transportation and things like that. So. Well, now, uh, we just, you just sent out the eligibility list for the Phi Theta Kappa. I did. Why should uh, students join Phi Theta Kappa? <laughs> Uh, money, money, money. <laughs> yes, lots of it. Money, um, money, money. So, no, Phi Theta Kappa is a great um, organization. You do have to have a 3.5 um, MCC transferable hours, um, and you're automatically invited to join. Um, but there are so many benefits of joining Phi Theta Kappa. Um, it, it looks great on your resume, it right? Does. It does. Um, and you do get scholarship money at all of the different, um, you know, every university in the state of Mississippi, private and public, give Phi Theta Kappa scholarships. And so that, that pays a huge portion of your um, tuition. Um, so that's a great reason. But they also have lots of other things. We do lots of service opportunities like this event that we're talking about today. Um, and, you know, anytime you have the opportunity to serve, you're going to grow as a person and you're going to help other people. Um, and it's just a win-win um, situation. Also, Phi Theta Kappa is great about doing additional scholarships that you can apply for through their website. Um, there's one going on now. 
Um, and then, you know, so just tons of reasons to join. Yeah, yes. just to grow as a leader. Well, mm -hmm. when I strong-armed you to come, in, to come uh, on the show, you were like, I don't think I can get up there and talk. Uh, but you've done a wonderful job. That is not what I said. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But I want to thank you for being here today. And uh, will you come back and see us again? I will, thank you. You promise? I, yes, yes, I promise. Okay. Pinky promise. Something, I don't know. <laughs> okay, right, thank, thank you. Thank you. We will be right back. Susie, we're so excited to introduce what we'll be doing for the Lauderdale County School District Play. I am excited to be a part of it this year. And to celebrate, I've brought a special guest to help us announce it. It seems he's a little late. Do you want to build a snowman? I do! <laughs> And we are back, and today we have Ms. Pam Baranello. And what is your uh, official title here at Meridian Community College? Military Veterans Services Coordinator. Military Veterans Services Coordinator. And you are here specifically to talk about what? The uh, POW MIA uh, Recognition Day. Okay, That's which is? Which is September 20th. Okay. Uh, we are going to hold a program um, at, on September 20th, tomorrow, Friday. Uh, at 9 o'clock at the IV building right in front of the flagpoles. Okay, excellent. And why is this day important? Um, this day is important uh, to observe the national, uh, the na the, ac across the nation on the third Friday. Well, let me start That's over. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Um, it's important. Um, for many Americans to take time to remember those who were prisoners of war and those who are missing in action. Um, it's uh, uh, always done on uh, the third Friday of September each year. Okay, and you, you just, there was a program yesterday uh, yes. for the POW MIA. Mm -hmm. At City Hall. Marinius. At City Hall, mm -hmm. and can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, it, it, it was so moving and um, just my heart went out to the gentleman, Captain, R Captain Richardson. Um, he was a POW for seven and a half years. He was shot down and captured. He was 22 years old, and he spent all that time. Um, Where was he captured, Did, um, do you remember? He was captured by the Viet Cong, and he told us about the story that they would parade him t through every village and just kind of mocking him and, um, and uh, you know, just, I don't know, it, sure. it's just, it's, it was unbelievable what, what had happened to him. And now he's able, at his age, to retell the story um, And I about heard it was it. very moving. Oh, yeah. He, he, there was, you could yeah. hear a pin drop. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hubner was here earlier and he spoke about that. Yeah. But you've been involved with this for a while now. Um, this is our second year doing it. Okay. Um, we uh, were taking part in a challenge that was um, passed to all the community colleges around um, the nation by the Eastern North, North Carolina POW MIA Recognition Day Awareness Committee mm -hmm. to fly our POW MIA flag on September 20th. I do hope we have a really good turnout tomorrow morning. And you said, what time is it I again? I so too. It's at 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock. And it's probably only going to last, what about? Oh, about 20 to 25 minutes. 20 to 25 minutes. Okay. And now your particular job where you're helping uh, incoming military, mm -hmm. uh, okay, when they come here, what, what do they need to have with them to make sure that things go as smoothly as possible? As smoothly as possible, they need to at least... Um, well, uh, just applying for their uh, VA benefits and okay. everything. Um, they can go on vets.gov and read all about um, Chapter 33, post 9/11, any chapters that you know that they might qualify for. Um, uh, fill out the application. Call the VA if they have any questions. Okay, and you help facilitate all of that. Mm -hmm. if, I do. Okay, because we've been, uh, and Meridian Community College has been, I think, very good about you know helping to take care of our military students and our military uh, just in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've been doing this for a while now. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? Two and a half, three years. Two and a half. Okay, okay, and you enjoying it? Yes. 
Yes, I, bet I, you get, I love working with the students um, and the, the veterans and the and active duty. And you, don't you? You have a son that was is in the military or was in the military? Yes, I have two. Two sons in the military. Yes. Okay. Uh, Both uh, ones in the regular army, ones in the army guard. So this is all very personal to you. Yes, and my husband was thirty years navy, so. So yeah. definitely very yeah, personal so to you. We're all. <laughs> I, in on it, except for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, with the POWs and MIAs, you know, it's just part of the debt that we owe, you know, these people who, who have done so much for us. And, you know, uh, uh, as I said, with the POW and still with the MIAs, where you families who don't have that closure. Correct. Um, and, and it's uh, important to share this with, you know, um, people, young people that have no idea what the Vietnam War was about, have no idea, you know, what people went through mm -hmm. while, you know, while that was happening. Um, it's, you know, well, it's just to be aware. Yes, and to help us remember. Mm -hmm. and, and that is what's so important. And I, I remember many years ago, and because I was one of those young people who, you know, it was just that was something out there, that was something that was happening elsewhere. And uh, uh, I worked in Saudi Arabia for many years. And I was there during the first Gulf War and, yeah. you know, as a civilian. And suddenly, you know, when the American military came in and you're like, oh, my goodness, thank you, you know, thank you. And since then, it, that's what it really keyed to me. It's like, you know, uh, <laughs> this is important. And these people put their lives on the line for us. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, as I said, it's a debt that we, that we have incurred that we have to... So we have to make sure that we are uh, uh, keeping keeping up with. Yes, and I do have some facts. Uh, Please. It's reported that Americans missing in action include almost 73,000 from World War II, 7,700 from the Korean conflict, 1,600 from the Vietnam conflict, and 126 from the Cold War. And we st still also have five from Operation Desert Storm and Operation Iraqi Freedom that are still missing in action. That's horrible. Um, and recently I um, saw on the news, I think it was um, August, where um, a Southwest pilot flew his dad's remains I home remember that. Um, from uh, 65, mm -hmm. I think it was 65. <coughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was really moving, and everybody at the airport just stopped what they were doing, mm -hmm. um, and stood and you know and showed so much respect for him coming in. That's wonderful. Yeah. Listen, I want to thank you for being here today. Well, thank you. I, I know you were excited. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna come back and see us, please? Yes, I will. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Noah with your MCC update. Interested in space? Well, on September 24th, there's going to be an astronomy lecture in the McCain Theater at 6 p.m. The lecture is called Impact Solar System Encounters by Edwin Fawn. Like running? MCC's Phi Theta Kappa is hosting the Queen City Race for Life on Saturday, September 28th. The run will include a 5K run and a street strut. Enjoy art? Come on down to the Miller Art Gallery before September 26th to check out our current exhibit. The gallery is open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., Mondays through Fridays. Thanks for watching. Join us again next week for your MCC update. I want to thank everyone who's worked so hard on this uh, show today. We have Matt Miller, the executive producer. We have Josh Taylor, the media consultant. And we have the student producer, Colton Aubritton. Remember, MCC Today is the only kosher, vegan, keto-friendly show. Tune in. We'll see you next week.